In January, I had this video come out detailing Big Z. And while most of you seem to have missed it, it was a very important video detailing information sent to me by one of my now best sources confirming all of the Z rumors up until now. The 512 execution units being built for mobile first and scaling up for high compute. And I also, in this video, speculated that it could use multiple GPUs to scale performance. However, I thought that it only was common sense, and also this is what I was told, that Intel would be most efficient at the bottom end at first, and while they would compete higher than people expected, there was just no evidence that they would be able to scale up performance as efficiently as AMD and NVIDIA in the high end. And as usually happens, video cards confirmed most of my information a few weeks later. However, when I said it would be less efficient in the top end, I wasn't thinking 500 watts. I was thinking 350 watts at most and that they wouldn't even bother going that high. So what the heck is going on here? Well, first, I think it's important to emphasize what Intel's game plan is here, right? They hired Roger Kadori and all these other people to get them out of the absolute rut they were in, failing to scale performance after Skylake. And again, in my opinion, frankly, after Broadwell's integrated graphics, you know, Intel had been innovating between 20 to 100 percent even sometimes graphics performance increases generation over generation, and that just stalled. But Ice Lake fixed that. They're now kind of up to around an MX150. And honestly, it's competitive with AMD's 12 nanometer Vega APUs that had 11 compute units. Now, Renoir will change that, but so will Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake goes from Ice Lake's 64 compute units, or execution units, I should say, to 96 execution units, along with around a 30% IPC increase. So that's. Fantastic. That should get Intel's integrated graphics performance just about around a GTX 1050 and a 28-watt iteration of Tiger Lake. That's what's in DG1 right now. This is a developer version of what you have in Tiger Lake. It is not meant to be a final representation. The drivers are ultra early, ultra buggy and ultra unoptimized, but they want to get people working on the architecture now. And so do expect it to improve and mature to about the performance of a 1050. And even as a 96 execution unit tile, notice I say tile, that should be enough to beat the MX350 or at least be competitive. Now, what would be the edge, though? Why would you go with a 96 execution unit tile? Well, first of all, it will be just included in some versions of Tiger Lake, so you won't need to add a GPU. So you save space and overall energy that way. But they might actually roll out this 96 EU tile as an add-in MX350 light card soon. It would be a brief launch and limited, but this might actually come. Intel's working very hard on multi-GPU scaling in a way that Zen scales with chiplets. So the first iteration will be 96 execution units. And if you're an OEM and you go, well, we have this Tiger Lake APU, we can add an MX450 later this year, should we do that? Why do that when you can add another 96 execution unit tile and have them scale together with 50 to 100% more performance? That's right. That's what Intel is working on, and that would also be their argument against adding an AMD APU and a dedicated graphics card. They're like, why? Why? We'll give you a cheaper deal. We're scaling them together. And even though this 96 EU dedicated tile add-on card might not come out, it would be just the start if it did. Either way, they are moving forward with a 128 EU tile system, both to integrate with their APUs and to integrate together over their own Fovros fabric. And it really does sound like it works, that the software recognizes it as one graphics card and that it scales very effectively. And unfortunately, I can share almost no details because my source doesn't want things to be exposed, but... Basically, it sounded like it was indeed capable of running 4K60 at around 300 watts. Now, this to me 
from further analysis sounds like something around a 5700 XT. And forget the power usage, that's a lot better performance than I think a lot of people are expecting. And the potential of adding tiles together and scaling performance via chiplets, just like how Zen does with CPU cores, I think is a bombshell. A bombshell that this is what Intel is working on so hard. But then again, it's not that much of a surprise. This is the type of stuff Raja talked about at Radeon before he left. This is what he wanted to do to scale Vega, I think, eventually. But there's still the big elephant in the room. Yes, maybe that was performing around a 5700 XT. Yes, maybe 10 nanometers getting better and drivers will mature so it'll be more efficient, but with still 300 watts. And that's simply too much. Scaling be damned. They're not going to 512 or higher execution units anytime soon if they can't cut that in half. And there's a detail people have overlooked here in this video cards leak. And that's that with one tile, it can use just 75 watts. So why does it say 75 or 150? Well, that's because the problem is the fabric they're using. The fabric they're using is consuming far too much energy. And so while well, it should get more efficient as you add tiles, it's actually getting less efficient. In other words, at least based on multiple sources I have talked to, it isn't a performance wall, nor is it a complete technical, like this thing doesn't work wall. The problem simply is it uses way, way, way too much energy to the point where some of the higher tile count products are only really in labs, and there's only a couple of them. But you know, Intel has some time. The strategy honestly makes sense. Get into integrated graphics first, scale performance higher, and I guess what they'll say to themselves is we have a couple years to solve the power usage issues. I'm told I cannot confirm how high or how many tiles they can put together right now and get it to scale performance, but it's, it's a lot more than two. I'll just say that. And so a successive die shrinks to say seven nanometer, then five nanometer, as you die shrink, maybe you don't increase performance per tile, but you can just keep adding more tiles as they use less energy. But again, none of that is going to matter if they can't solve the fabric. Which brings me to part two of this video, pointing out how impressive Infinity Fabric is from AMD and how AMD is a major threat now, right? The problem is, well, Intel has some time to figure this out, AMD already has figured this out. And so AMD truly deserves to be commended for being hyper-efficient with multiple dies right out of the gate. And they improved it to the point that they can fit 16 cores into a small package that uses less energy than not just monolithic dies, but Intel's best yields of monolithic dies. And note that half of that 3950X is still using 12 nanometer. Infinity Fabric is to be reckoned with, but it's not all AMD has to work with. And so while Intel's trying to solve their fabric problems, AMD's already got them working and their architectures are now so good that they don't need to glue a bunch of chips together. Their monolithic dies themselves, like the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, will be incredibly impressive. And yeah, I do want to touch on the Xbox leak for a second. I mean, this did just pop up in the news and it is an APU, so let me touch on it because it has stuff to do with other things I'm talking about. So number one, the custom SSD. From the start, this console, and I've talked to people at Xbox, was planned to basically just be a Gen 3 SSD. A faster one, but not even necessarily at the theoretical limit of Gen 3. But they saw the PlayStation 5 storage, which is truly custom, and so now they're buying a slower Gen 4 SSD, to my knowledge. So they bumped up the specs, but it's, it's still basically just a maximized Gen 3 SSD. Of course with successive versions of this console having a Gen 4 controller, they can make it faster in the future with new iterations. But I do expect Xbox to, and this is becoming so fascinating for me to watch the marketing speak coming from PlayStation uh, and Xbox at the same time. I do expect them to use the term custom SSD a lot to make it sound like they have something as semi-custom as the PlayStation. But we'll just have to see what the full specs say eventually. Xbox doesn't want to reveal any cards they don't need to yet, and neither does PlayStation. But there are some other interesting dog whistles besides the SSD. 
There's also the talk of variable rate shading, which I find oddly technical for this still not being the full reveal. Um, but I think it's a dog whistle. I think they're hinting that they're using one of the very latest iterations of our DNA with their own patented custom features. And so they're trying to, I don't know, let's say entice out what architectural custom features Sony has. And I expect Sony to do the same thing where they start hinting at these odd specific features to see if Xbox will mit match them. They're seeing if they can match each other tit for tat in specific architectural features. So this should be really funny to watch unfold. But the point is that it is a custom design processor using the latest Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architectures. Yeah, they both saw what was on AMD's roadmap and they both hand selected what will make sense for them. And if there was any redesign of a console, and I believe they both redesigned their console at least once, they will reevaluate and choose the newer features if it makes sense for what they're designing. But at the end of the day, what we know is that developers continue to say they'll have around the same graphical performance. And so it's gonna come down to extra features like sound, ray tracing, VR, load times, and of course, games. But the second reason this is important to highlight is based on some other information I was sent. Well, I put Zen 3 in the thumbnail, it was not strictly confirmed to be Zen 3 in my information, and it sounds like more of a half or even, I would argue, quarter node shrink to lower power usage on 7 nanometer plus. It's not that AMD isn't having Zen 3 APUs come out soon, but that specific one was more close to Zen 2, despite being on 7 nanometer plus, and that they called the RDNA architecture, despite having a lot of the features like variable rate shading, to be more of an RDNA 1.5. And I actually saw a leak the other day that said both the PlayStation and Xbox will have RDNA 1.5. So now I have sources saying that and another leak. The other leak is unverified, of course, but I think it's worth pointing out that Renoir really isn't exactly the same Zen 2 architecture either. All of these architectures are different and floating around. And that brings me to where I actually cut this video in half. I will be doing another APU onslaught video. But the point of that one and the point I want to get across quickly now is that there are a lot of custom architectures, both RDNA and Zen floating around on the seven nanometer family of processes. And when I say family, I mean seven nanometer, seven nanometer UV, and six nanometer. These are all different processes, and I expect AMD to custom design different APUs for PlayStation, for Xbox, for, for Microsoft, for Surface, and even for Apple with Van Gogh, which is also a thing in addition to Cezanne this year. This will be an onslaught, but that will be another video. What I will close is one more thing about RDNA 2. A lot of rumors coming out now about 80 compute units in HBM2E, and this is what I confirmed late last year. But one thing I never really told you guys that I will say now, Big Navi, one of the biggest versions, right, your 5950XT, around 80 compute units, and 24 gigabytes of HBM2E, with a 4096-bit bus. Now, I said that that can't be correct because the bus doesn't line up with the capacity, but I just kind of miscounted HBM2E. I assumed it was just a miscommunication, but really it was just me doing some rough math wrong. Again, a reason that video's not up anymore, but there it is, everybody. Those specs look scary accurate to what I was told a while ago. There's a lot of people poo-pooing these newer leaks about Big Navi. I think they're pretty much all accurate. I could be wrong, but if they're fake, they line up with what I was told half a year ago and with what other rumors were saying a few months ago. I do think Big Navi will be this powerful. Well, AMD must be commended for their Infinity Fabric and will be continued to use in a bazillion of their products. Their monolithic launches this year with their APUs or Big Navi are going to be incredible. But the big question I think everyone needs to start asking themselves is if AMD will be able to scale up graphics performance and integrate them together like they have with Zen before Intel can scale down the power usage of their interconnect. Intel has the performance, but their interconnect uses too much energy. AMD 
has the low energy interconnect, but they still need to work on the software and architecture to utilize it for a graphics card. A lot of cool products coming out this year from AMD. Ampere swinging near the end of the year to add on. And then about a year and a half after that, hopefully we can have some powerful graphics cards from Intel. But those powerful graphics cards from Intel aren't coming this year, and I don't think they're really coming next year, at least not in the beginning. Intel's still got a long ways to climb, but at least now you know what's going on in the background. Oh, and one other thing I'll say that I think is funny. Intel regrets showing off all those unicorn vomit renders of triple fan graphics cards. They think that they overhyped Z way too early. And Raja specifically is telling people to turn down the hype, shut up, and get to work because we can't be talking about our big cards when they might not be ready for a couple years. In fact, there was going to be some gigantic event where they unveiled Z again and had like Raja on a big stage and stuff. I guess there still might be a big event, but Raja specifically canceled the Z portion. It's not coming soon, and it's because of the power usage issues. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention half of the views of all of my videos are currently not from subscribers. So please make sure you subscribe, and if you have, ring that bell button, share my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. You get access to a bunch of content early and ad-free. And one of those things that comes out for everyone tomorrow is a new broken silicon, and I'm just saying... It's with an Austrian economist, so it's not a normal subject matter for Broken Silicon. But if you like it, I think it's one of the best interviews. So give it a try, everybody. All right. Peace.